Oh man, you guys have no idea how good it feels to finally be able to tell you this. You're teasing me. Yo, chill, bro. 100 eater. It should be uh, too many. Too, too talk many. to him. Talk to him. <laughs> nah, all that's cool and all, but the real reason why I'm here, look what I just got. <laughs> Come on, bro. Yo, what's going on guys, man, and welcome back to not just any video. I'm sure most of you clicked on this because of the title, so let me go into that just a little bit. You guys have been hearing me say I've been extremely busy recently, and it's not just because I've moved into this all-new apartment. It's because last week, Call of Duty flew us out to San Francisco to play Modern Warfare 3, the new Call of Duty releasing at the end of this year early. And I'm talking about multiplayer. That's what we had a chance to play. We played a good amount of matches on it too, and they also gave us a briefing and gave us a bunch of information about the game that I'm allowed to share with you guys. So what I'm going to need you to do before I get into all the information, before I get into what happened on the trip, how it happened, all of that, get your popcorn ready because we're in for a great video right here. Do me a favor and drop a like on the video if you are excited for Modern Warfare 3 now with all the stuff you've been hearing and what you're about to hear. And also, if you guys are new around here and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new people watching this video, subscribe to the channel. We're on that road to 400k and you guys do not want to miss out on the videos that are coming not only to start off modern warfare 3 but even before that man subscribe to the channel i also want to give a huge thank you to call of duty and activision for flying me out there they always look after me man they look after all of us i've been going to these events since 2019 now from since i just turned 19 years old and now i'm 23 and each event that i've been to they've always looked after us man you know they took care of us took care of the hotel the flights all of that so i really want to give a huge thank you to them they even had some activities for us EU guys that were flying really, really far. We actually went on a cruise huh? under the Golden State Bridge. If I have some footage, I'll show you guys. But not only that, we went past Alcatraz, Rebirth Island. And when I tell you, seeing that in person is the craziest thing ever. Anyways, from the briefing where we got all the information about the game, I wrote all the notes down in my phone right here. I've even got some footage to show over the top of some of the stuff that I'm talking about as well. So I will say, let me preface the fact that there is a lot of stuff that I can't really really talk about but i'm gonna tell you absolutely everything i can and trust me there's some crazy information in there so you don't want to miss it get your popcorn ready sit back and let's get into it i need it okay so let's get into the first couple of things so call of duty have already talked about a couple things over on twitter so you guys may know this but if you don't know we are getting all of these modern warfare 2 weapons by the way if you're wondering why i'm using the acr i don't know Anyway, all of the Modern Warfare 2 weapons from this game will be transferred over to Modern Warfare 3, which is pretty interesting. The last time we saw that was with Warzone, where we would get all of the multiplayer games weapons in that game too. It's not really like that though, because not only do you get the weapons from this Modern Warfare 2, but you also get the camos too. So if you've unlocked Orion, you will have Orion in Modern Warfare 3. However, you guys know this is of course a question that I had to ask. If we can have Orion in Modern Modern Warfare 3 then. Does that mean we can instantly use Orion on the Modern Warfare 3 weapons? No, you can't. You can only use the camos that you've unlocked on the Modern Warfare 2 weapons on the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. But it still does make things very interesting because first of all, not only do you have a mastery camo off rip in Modern Warfare 3 if you want to just use the Modern Warfare 2 weapons, but it also gives you another place to be able to unlock the camos at because maybe you don't have the Orion camo yet, but you can can still unlock Orion in Modern Warfare 3, meaning you have a whole different map set, you have a whole different bunch of gameplay mechanics to use to try and unlock Orion if you wanted to do it in Modern Warfare 3 instead. I think that's pretty cool. So for those of you that haven't unlocked Orion yet, don't worry because it's still pretty fun for you too. Of course, all the attachments from this game, Modern Warfare 2, will move over to Modern Warfare 3 as well as the weapons, of course, which will mean we'll have as well as the Modern Warfare 3 attachments 
a lot of attachments, bro. A lot of them. So there will be a lot of stuff to choose from, which is pretty cool. So in the briefing where they gave us a lot of information about the game before we actually played the game, basically to just let you guys understand a little bit further, they took us to the Sledgehammer Studios, of course, which was a lot of fun. It was cool to see all the memorabilia around the place. But when they took us there, they took us into a theater. All of us creators were there and they basically showed us the reveal trailer, which you guys have probably already seen by now, because I think when the reveal trailer drops is when I can drop this video talking to you guys about all the information. We saw the reveal trailer. That was pretty cool. It got us all hyped. But not only that, we also were able to see the first half of the campaign mission. So we saw the first half of the first campaign mission to start off Modern Warfare 3. And trust me, hey, it got me hyped. You guys know in that Makarov trailer, you see little snippets of Verdansk and we're all wondering why we were seeing Verdansk in that trailer. Is Verdansk coming back? I'll try and describe it just a little bit for you guys because it can be kind of difficult. We saw a start off in the ocean next to prison and we basically were in a bunch of scuba day. We come from underneath the water outside of one of the pillars from the castle at prison and I believe what happens is stealthily we zip line to the top of prison which is crazy to see by the way. Just being able to see Verdansk again like just in gameplay wise in Modern Warfare 3 was kind of weird but you know I guess we're trying to get someone out the prison if you know you know. This is kind of why do you know that care package that got sent out to a bunch of streamers with that prison kit it had a blanket it had a cell phone it had you know a cup and stuff like that it was all themed around the prison at Verdansk and that's where that campaign mission is and I guess you know you find your way in you get in start making your way down in the middle of prison getting through a bunch of enemies and stuff like that and then the last part that we saw was we got to a certain level in the prison put a c4 on the door it blew up and that's all we saw no 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 it's weird because my main thing during that mission was trying to spot different weapons and some of the different weapons that I saw were the CX-9, you guys remember that from Modern Warfare 2019, the Cast Off 762, a weapon called the MTZ, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will love, the Expedite 12 shotgun, the MP5, the RAL LMG, the Holger LMG, which I believe is actually an assault rifle in that game, or at least that's how it looks. We got the AK-47, which will probably be called something else, the Lackman 556, the 725, the M4, those are the weapons weapons that I was able to note down from watching the mission. And also another thing I realized is the graphics were crazy. It was a nighttime setting. You could see how different surfaces were wet. Do you guys know the Modern Warfare series recently, they look amazing. And that campaign mission really does look crazy. A cool thing that they mentioned about the campaign is they've added a new dynamic to it called open combat missions. And basically it just allows for more freedom. You guys know a lot of the missions we have currently are simply like cinematics, a bunch of that different stuff. Where you don't really have freedom. You're kind of walking down one path and it tells you where to go, etc. Now, they're still going to be there, of course, a lot of the time, but there's now going to be open combat missions where it just gives you a lot more freedom, allows you to, you know, choose whatever vehicle you want, choose what direction you want to go in, how you want to approach a situation, how you want to, I don't know, crash land into somewhere, how you want to, you know, enter a building, all that different stuff. It's more open and just allows for more choice, which I think is pretty cool. Although I love the cinematics part, I think it will be a good mix up to have those and you know to have choice as well so I'm excited to see how that works you guys also know at the end of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign we saw that little teaser on the plane where you get that text message and it says no Russian we also saw a little snippet of that and what happens so there's a mission after that no Russian teaser ending of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign and it's called crash landing and that's an open combat mission just like I described and it looks pretty cool I noticed a couple very small things when watching watching that campaign mission, one of them was the fact that when you die, the transition going back to where you last left off is pretty cool. It kind of like zooms back, you know, like rewinds going all the way back to where you last were, the last checkpoint, rather than just, you know, pausing and then maybe going black screen and then appearing where you last were. It will like zoom back to where you last was, which I think is pretty cool. You know, we're gonna see a bunch of OG gulags that we saw from Warzone 1 in the campaign. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Let's talk about zombies. Now, we didn't see any gameplay of zombies, nor did we get to play zombies. However, during the briefing where they told us a bunch of information about it, 
It looks crazy. So think of zombies mixed with DMZ. That's exactly how this is going to be. And I'm talking about everything. Of course, it's still going to have the wall weapons. Of course, it's still going to have the mystery box and all that different stuff. But just think of it with DMZ concepts so that, okay, you can take different attachments. You can take different weapons out of the game. And if you make it an Xville out of this big map, then you can take those into the next game. And of course, since it's similar to DMZ, that also means you can go into zombies with more multiple squads so it's not just your squad that you will see in the map on the map and of course it's going to be a big map you're going to be running into other squads too just like dmz but the difference with this of course there's going to be zombies there too now apparently this is set between modern warfare 1 modern warfare 2019 and modern warfare 2 so set in the middle somewhere let me actually read this so i don't say anything wrong so there's still going to be cinematics and stuff you guys know with zombies we all love the easter eggs and stuff like that and all of that's still going to be there on this big map you know there's still going to be cinematics every so often if you go into certain places go into certain buildings and loot certain buildings complete certain things you know all of that storyline stuff however it's just going to be on a bigger map and be kind of like dmz in the sense of you can xville out of the game now the storm on this zombies is called the aether storm which is pretty cool and there's also different areas so you've got the easy areas where the zombies won't be too difficult you've got the medium areas where the zombies start getting more challenging there's probably different types of zombies and stuff like that and then you get to that high risk areas and the reason for these different areas is since you can now exville and bring certain things out of the game and take it into your next one those high risk areas you won't be able to go to and survive if you don't play this zombies game you know you will have had to play it a few times at least to take out certain equipment certain things that will help you survive in those high risk areas so it's all about player progression and i'm sure in those higher risk areas there are higher rewards too i don't know how it feels from i don't know i call a zombie player's perspective because I know from the outside looking in as someone who doesn't really play zombies too much it looks really fun and I'm excited to see how that actually turns out you can also exville with zombies perks too and take those into the next game so you guys know juggernaut and all that different stuff if you exville with that you can go into the next game with it and I'm sure you can probably loot people that you've killed and take their perks and stuff like that it's gonna be interesting one thing that they described to us is that of course you can build weapons so you can get different crates like you could get a ray gun crate and if you get a ray gun crate you can take that out of that game and take it into the next one it's very interesting but like i said there's still gonna be perk machines there's still gonna be wall weapons and all that different stuff it's still zombies but it's dmz style also i'm not sure if i fully mentioned this but there's going to be strongholds just like we know from warzone now in that zombies dmz thing and there's also going to be story missions in each game so there's three acts each of them once you do them they end in a cinematic cutscene. they take you to a sub map kind of like dmz DMZ has now where you could go to building 21 stuff like that they will take you to a sub map where you can you know do whatever needs to be done there and it will end in a cutscene giving you those zombies vibes very interesting but let's get into multiplayer i know that's what a lot of you guys were waiting for and a lot of you guys are very excited about so let's talk about it so i'm pretty sure you guys have already seen it over on twitter but we are getting all of the og modern warfare 2 2009 classic maps in modern warfare Warfare 3 at launch, which is the craziest thing ever. The last thing we all expected. Those are the maps we are going to have at launch. We're talking about Terminal, Quarry, High Rise. All of those OG maps from that game will be the maps for Modern Warfare 3 off rip. No other maps. In fact, the only other maps we'll have will be in Ground War. So you will have different Ground War maps, of course. In terms of the classic, you know, Modern Warfare 3 maps we're going to have, they're going to be the Modern Warfare 2 2000 2009 maps and bear in mind that's from 2009 so they're all going to be remastered of course i played some of them they're all remastered to look like they're on this new engine it's it's crazy and i'm very excited for that and it's cool because we're basically guaranteed to have some goated maps at the start of the game you know how usually we get a new call of duty game and we're kind of scared of the new maps we don't know whether they're going to be good or not we don't know whether you know it's a good map until we've played it a few times now we are going to know for sure and we are guaranteed to have some good maps at the start which i'm really excited for that nostalgia is there which is pretty cool i don't know it's an interesting approach but it should be a fun one too i'm looking forward to see how that works i'm curious to see what you guys think as well do you like the idea of only having the remastered maps from the og modern warfare 2 to start off with do you care about having completely new maps or would you prefer to have those maps that you know you like let me know what you guys think on that anyway we've got of course the classic launch modes 
team death match kill confirmed hard point all that different stuff but there's a couple new modes we've got a game mode called cutthroat and it's basically a 3v3 v3 three different teams that is also round based as well next up and this is a thing a lot of people got hyped about when they told us the movement of modern warfare 3 so i'm sure you guys have heard a lot about it a lot of different rumors and stuff like that so they told us straight up that the movement is a lot less restrictive to what we've had within this game you guys know how in this game you feel like you're stood in the mud and pretty much they've changed absolutely everything in terms of movement they've made absolutely everything faster it's all a lot more responsive a lot less restrictive too so yes it's true you can slide cancel you can mantle a lot quicker there's also this new stance called the tax stance and essentially what it is it's like in between of sprinting and also walking so if you wanted to kind of sprint just like hip fire up it's almost like a tax sprint for your walk if that makes sense so you know how you walk you can hip fire but then if you run you can't really hip fire without stopping there's a thing called tax stance which is like an in between to where you're walking really fast but you can hip fire a little bit another huge thing that we're all happy about is the fact that they've increased their health the health in these past couple games has been extremely low to the point where you feel like you're dying instantly however they've increased the base health to 150 now which is kind of like i want to say it's like black ops 4 you know how black ops 4 is known for having that kind of long time to kill it's kind of like that now which i think is a huge w you don't feel like you're dying as quick you feel like you can get out of certain gunfights the gunfights last a little bit longer it just makes for a whole better gaming experience in my opinion or at least that's how i remember it to be in black ops 4 and i think that's a huge w to have in terms of your loadouts the whole adding attachments stuff is pretty simple of course you can still tune your weapons and stuff like that however one thing they have changed is the perk system now you guys may have seen a few leaks about this but i'm able to confirm it now so the perk system is now centered around different gear and actual real life gear and armor so for example if you wanted a perk that helped with your movement speed then realistically that's going to be a boot it's going to be a boot or some type of footwear that you put on in game that will allow your movement to be a little bit faster say if you wanted to protect yourself from explosive damage that would be a chest plate or you know some torso equipment that you would put on to be able to help against that it just makes it i guess a little bit more realistic it's pretty much the same thing just kind of set out differently rather than being actual perks it will be an actual piece of equipment that you'll put on that will pretty much do the same thing but it's just a cool way of doing it and what i see that doing is just opening doors for them being able to add some cosmetics for certain you know pieces of armor maybe allows for more customization for us down the line because you know it's more focused on the gear pieces that you're putting on who knows we also saw a bunch of different equipment being used there was this mosquito drone that you could throw into the air it'll hover for a second and then attack someone in a nearby area when it tracks them there's also this crazy weird piece of equipment called i believe it's called the acs and basically what that does is you can throw that down let's say you're playing domination for example you could throw that down and it will capture the flag for you huh? whether you're stood on it or not very weird they also mentioned the fact that they may have to you know tweak that a little bit depending on whether it's broken or not but yeah you can throw that down on a hard point or domination it won't last very long at all but you could throw it down and it will capture the point for you there's also this thing called aftermarket parts and there's only going to be a few of those at launch but essentially what it allows you to do is turn certain weapons into a different weapon type so for example you could turn a pistol into a carbine and instantly when i saw that i thought of this pistol right here here. so this is the x13 auto and what you can do is you can put on this barrel and it will turn it into an smg so essentially aftermarket parts are kind of similar to this in the sense of you can turn a weapon into a totally different weapon i already mentioned the fact that all of the stuff from modern warfare 2 is coming into modern warfare 3 in terms of weapons and attachments but what i didn't mention is i would be able to put some of the modern warfare 3 attachments on some of these modern warfare 2 guns which is kind of interesting i assume most of those attachments will be very similar to what we already have so i'm I'm sure it won't make too much of a difference unless there's some crazy attachments in that game however that's just pretty cool regardless like i said the movement is completely different it's similar to modern warfare 2019 in terms of the fact that you can slide cancel properly you can move really fast you can reload cancel you can mantle over things really quickly i'll be totally honest basically what they did they did everything that we asked for
It's as simple as that. Everything that we've been asking for from the start of Modern Warfare 2 is exactly what they showed us in the briefing for Modern Warfare 3. It's crazy. Like I said, other than the briefing, we did have a chance to play it. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to record it or anything like that. I can't even really talk about that too much, but I basically experienced all of the things that I just told you guys about. I don't mean to get you guys hyped for no reason. Just know I've actually played the game. I'm not just telling you guys a bunch of information that I've been told. I've played the game, you know? But yeah, I think that's pretty much all of the information that I can let you guys know about regarding Modern Warfare 3 from my trip to San Francisco. If I did miss anything, feel free to ask me in the comments down below a bunch of things that you do want to know. And if and only if I can tell you, I'll be responding to a bunch of comments. So feel free to comment down below. Multiplayer guys have to be excited, man. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.